Hey everyone, my name is Carolyn, so welcome back to another video. So today we are talking about home is where the heart is. Now that is such a common saying. People make signs for their homes out of those. You can see those on, see it on tea towels and all of that fun stuff. And I kind of want to discuss how we can make God our home and also make him a home in our heart. So on the night of the of April the 18th, after a conversation with my mom, God had me pondering this saying. The way someone acts in their home is so different to how they'd act when they're out and about. At home, we feel safe to be vulnerable, open, honest, comfortable enough to cry our eyes out, to laugh obnoxiously without fear of judgment, to be silly and dance around, to sing on the top of our lungs no matter how good of a singer we think we are. There's this beautiful simplicity to how we act in our homes. We are free to dance, sing, and free to be ourselves. I often think about how our bodies are temples for the Holy Spirit. We are used as vessels for God to do his work. God is our solid rock and firm foundation. If we make him our home, wouldn't we feel confident enough to act this way with him? To be in our truest form with him. To be free to dance, sing, laugh, cry, and to even sit in complete silence with him. But why is it that we have such a hard time being ourselves with him? I mean, really, he knows every thought, sees our hearts, knit us in our mother's rooms, numbered the hairs on our heads, knows more about us than our own mothers do, and yet we act as though he's just an acquaintance. But he's so much more than that. I want God to make a home in my heart, but I also want my home to be with him. I pray and hope that I am not the only one who wants this who wants this type of relationship with God, who wants this level of personal relationship with him, where he's the first person I go to in every situation and the first person I spend time with in the mornings. I crave and aspire to have this type of relationship with God where nothing could possibly separate or even come between me and him. We are linked as one, arm in arm, and hand in hand. This is what my heart desires most. The first Bible verse that I want to read to you guys is 1 John 4, 7-16. The title for it says, God's Love and Ours. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testify that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world if anyone acknowledges that jesus is the son of god god lives in them and they in god and so we know and rely on the love god has for us god is love whoever lives in love lives in god and god in them on April 22nd, during Bible study that morning, God was talking to me about how he's transformed my life. And he used something that I had been saying and praying for to show me the transformation that he's made so far. This is what he said. You've gone from saying, I need you, Jesus, to I want you, Jesus. You've been redeemed and transformed, my daughter. I had been praying and asking God to be with me and to help me. But I now find myself wanting him, wanting a relationship with him and craving that time with him. And um, for me, seeing that transformation, just simply those simple words going from I need you, Jesus, to I want you, Jesus. Um, for me, that was really emotional when he shared that with me. He was like, you know, you've gone from, from saying I need you to I want you. And, you know, I feel like that is a testament to just how his and I's relationship has grown and um you know I hope that just that simple um sentence that simple quote that I just shared with you guys you know going from I need you Jesus to I want you Jesus I hope that serves as kind of encouragement and almost 
hope for the future of your relationship with Jesus and um, that you can get to that point where it's like, you, you know, don't get me wrong, we won't ever stop needing Jesus, right? But um, there's a difference when you go from being in such a crisis mode um, and such a, um, you know, dark place where it's like, man, I really need you, like, I can't do this on my own, to I want you, Jesus, even on the normal everyday um, basis, you know, where nothing's happening, it's just a normal day, it's like, no, I want you, Jesus, you know, and so I think there's just this beauty in that transformation. So the next Bible verse time I share with you guys is Isaiah 43, 1-7, and I love this Bible verse. Um, again, this Bible verse came from morning Bible study, um, and I just love what it says um, throughout the scripture, and, um, you know, you can go and highlight all the things that God says about you, um, and I definitely recommend putting in your name um, for this Bible verse, so instead of Israel or instead of Jacob, I encourage you to put in your name. God had me do that, um, and it's really just such an encouraging Bible verse and just a beautiful Bible verse, so um, this uh, <laughs> section of scripture talks about Israel's only savior, and it says, But now this is what the Lord says, He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. But when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your steed. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you, nations in exchange for you, for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by, na by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And I just absolutely love that Bible verse. Um, like I said, put your name in there. Um, and it's just such an encouraging thing. You know, throughout the scripture, he's saying, I formed you, I made you, you are mine. Um, you know, you will not be burned, and, and just all of these in encouraging things that sometimes we do need to hear um, <laughs> and we need to read, especially when we're going through such dark times. So on April 22nd, I shared this post. I said, for the past month, I've really been prioritizing worship as the first thing I do in my mornings. And of course, that is followed by Bible study, but not just any Bible study. I've been allowing God to lead me to whatever Bible passage he wants me to read giving him control over that, learning to trust him and his guidance, but also learning to listen for his voice. Not just doing Bible study to check it off my to-do list, but doing it because I want to. To be honest, I have missed a few days and also didn't always do it in the mornings. God knows I'm not perfect. Recently, God had me writing a list of what I desire, one of which was to crave Bible study and worship like I crave to check social media and messages every morning. Over the past few days, I felt this craving, this excitement, like a kid in a candy store type of feeling to do Bible study in the mornings. I actually look forward to going to sleep so I can wake up and do Bible study. Well, let's be honest, I love sleep regardless. I wanted to share this because I'm excited about this transformation that God's made in me. But I also wanted those of you to feel as who, sorry. But I also wanted those of you who feel as though your relationship with God is struggling a bit to know that God can and will redeem it. But you have to be willing to make the time for him. He's with us 24-7, so why can't you find five, five minutes <laughs> of time in your day to spend it with him? A relationship is not one-sided. It takes two people to make work. I encourage you to find the time, prioritize it, and don't let this time with God be the thing that gets sacrificed when you are short on time. Focus on him and make him a priority in your life, and I assure you things will start to change, even if you can't see it right now. And I just wanted to leave you with that last little bit of encouragement, which was another kind of spontaneous writing session that I had with God. Um, and I just felt like it just paired beautifully with um, this video. And, um, you know, make your heart his home, but also make your home in him. You know, we may travel all over the world. Our dresses may change over time. But the one thing that will remain the same is 
God. He's not going anywhere. He's here with you right now, and he will always be. And just like scripture says, he will go before you. He will go after you. He will be right next to you in the middle, in the center of it all. He will be, be with you through every step and through the whole entire process. He is with you. And, um, you know, I just, I wanted this video to be encouraging. I wanted this video to, um, you know, for me, sharing this video is very personal because, you know, a lot of this came from my morning Bible study with God. And, but I wanted to share it because it's, it's something that I've wanted for so long is to have a good relationship with God. And, you know, of course, that relationship is still growing, still developing, and I'm still working on it. But, you know, to, to get to the point where I am right now um, is amazing because I've wanted it for so long. And I know so many of you want the same things. You know, you see these people who have ama amazing um, relationships with the Lord. They're doing daily Bible study. You know, they're, um, you know, having worship every single day. And, you know, it's not just on Sundays. It's every single day. And, you know, you see these people and you're like, oh, I aspire to be that. But the reality is, is that we do have to work on it. You know, we have to put the work in to, um, to change and to um, grow that relationship just like any any normal relationship or friendship it takes a lot of work to develop that and um, to grow that and um, you know for me I've relied on him so much through the tough times that I realized that I really wanted to rely him rely on him even in the most insignificant moments you know because the reality is he's with us in those crazy times but he's also with us in the most insignificant moments and ways, you know, like he's with us just on <laughs> everyday basis through every single day, um, you know, walking alongside us through our daily routines and all of that fun stuff. And so, um, you know, I just, I, I am just so excited about growing my relationship with God. And, um, you know, I hope that this video encourages you as well to just really prioritize your, your relationship with God and not to sacrifice it when you're short on time. Um, and really just put the effort in because, you know, even just five minutes, if you can just work five minutes into your routine, um, you know, at first that's what I started with. I was like, okay, five minutes, that's it. Just five minutes. And then God just had me, you know, give up control and just let him kind of lead me in my Bible study and, and, you know, starting my mornings with worship music and just kind of getting in the flow of things. And um, I think it's just such a peaceful way to start my day. And I definitely feel off when I don't do it. So <laughs> it's definitely a motivation now to keep going with it because the days that I did miss, I was like, man, I just feel completely off. Like my whole day is like completely off. It's it's all like wacky and all over the place. So, um, you know, it definitely made me realize how much I need this, but how much I also want this. Um, so anyways, I'm not going to ramble, ramble on anymore in this video, um, but I just hope that this video encourages you and um, you can go and follow the Puri Sisters Instagram page. The link is in the description box below. And a link to the Bible app that I use, it's by version. That is also in the description box below. So you can go and um, check it out and download it if you'd like. Um, and yeah, I find it's really helpful. And they're great because they have daily Bible verses. So if you're doing the five-minute kind of Bible study, you can feel free to um, go and do that. And, and I do want to say one thing is that um, when I kind of stopped having such a structured Bible study, just set where it's so set and so scheduled, um, and I really allowed God to kind of take over and the Holy Spirit to take over. That's when things really started to change. Um, and I just want to encourage you to not necessarily, um, have it so scheduled, you know, don't, don't, um, get into a routine and stick to it, you know, just let the Holy Spirit kind of take over and guide you in that, um, and yeah, with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and share, and I will see you guys next time.